We've had three Sundays in a row where we've had a baptism. You may have noticed that every time we have a baptism, the congregation is given the opportunity and the challenge to reaffirm our own baptismal vows. So we rehearse the creed, after which I ask a question. Will you persevere in the apostles' teaching, in the fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? You may notice those things from our Acts reading today. The response is, I will with God's help. How are you doing with that? Have you thought about this promise? What difference has the promise to persevere in these things, or to use the language of Scripture, to be devoted to these things, what difference has these four elements made in your life? In his book, A Serious Call to the Devout and Holy Life, William Law writes, If you will stop here and ask yourselves why you are not as pious as the primitive Christians were, your own heart will tell you. It is neither through ignorance nor inability, but purely because you never thoroughly intended it. Now, I recognize that can seem a bit condemning. And the point isn't to have a sermon of judgment or a, or a condemnation, um, or a sermon of criticism. I think we do need to be challenged. And we do need to ask ourselves a question, are we living an intentional Christian life? Are we intending to live out our faith? What do our baptismal promises mean to us? How do they shape our lives? Because that's what we see in our Acts reading, 3,000 people uh, were baptized, and they began to live a particular life, a life which was centered around these four components. Those same components that we say we will build our life upon. This morning, because we can uh, kind of dive down deeply into each of these components, I'm only going to be dealing with that first means of Christian living, the apostles' teaching, and speaking specifically just to that. Our reading begins on the heels of the baptism of 3,000 new believers, and we read that last week. It happens on the day of Pentecost. Now, our reading, however, is a little bit of a look back, uh, because it's looking back on the life that they begin to live, which begins to be lived in a markedly new way. They devoted themselves to certain practices and behaviors in which they lived out their new identity, their, their new life with Jesus. These 3,000 people, new believers began to live differently in the world. They devoted themselves to these practices and behaviors. And when it says that they devoted themselves, the word doesn't just mean a sense of persistence. It doesn't just mean that they, they did these things over and over again. It means that there is a singleness of intent by which all of life became defined. Their lives and how they lived their lives became defined by these four elements. If you want an image, you can think of it as these became four compass points by which their lives were navigated. So what is meant when it says the Christian community devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching? Obviously, Peter, uh, Paul, John, they hadn't written their letters yet, uh, nor were the gospels written yet. The apostles' teaching meant to sit and learn about Jesus from those who had been with him. Importantly, Jesus was the content of the teaching. The apostles taught as they had been taught. They told stories of things that Jesus said. They recounted what Jesus did. More than that, the apostles' teaching also took the form of declaring the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember the baptism. Repent and be baptized and you will receive the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't just a looking back. The apostle teaching wasn't just a type of history lesson. It was a de declaration of how through the Holy Spirit, the power of God could be realized today. It was more kind of how you could live this life, this day, right here and now, in the presence of Jesus and in the power of God. It was, that was how the apostle's teaching was really mediated in those days. But again, I want to highlight that word devotion. Because it's easy for us to think, well, this means that they just learned the stories. 
Or to put it in our context, to devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching means, well, we just simply need to read the Bible. Devotion doesn't just mean memorization. It doesn't talk about a process by which we learn the information of the Bible. Because to think of it this way means that we can eventually stop. If the point is just to read the Bible, once you've finished the Bible, you can close it up and put it back on the shelf. Right? Once you have memorized Psalm 23, do you actually really need to read it again? If our interaction with the Apostles' teaching is just about a download of information into our computer-like brains, then we either have it or we do not. I mean, that's not what we're talking about. Devotion speaks much deeper. It speaks to our need to have the truth of Jesus as spoken through the Apostles' words, which is now mediated through the Scriptures for us. So we allow that truth of Jesus' presence, the truth of Jesus' words, continually form us. We open our lives, not just to the words themselves, but to the Spirit which speaks through them. The truth of Jesus' lordship, of his saving presence in our lives, does not just inform what we think about. It forms our life, and it's an ongoing process. It is to say over and above everything else that this is what I believe and this is the truth in which I will live my life. Now for the 3,000 believers, devotion to the apostles' teaching occurred primarily through love feasts. They gathered to hear about Jesus. And in that hearing, they would experience the truth of Christ's lordship. Did you think about that? Right? The same thing happens when we sit devotedly with hearts open and Bibles open. Right? We sit with the apostles' teaching, and yet we also experience the reality of Christ's lordship in that moment. A reality of Christ's presence speaking into our lives. Over time, the creed became a symbol of what it meant to devote oneself to the apostles' teaching. That's why our tradition has retained saying the creed at every service. The creed is not just a statement of belief, it is a statement of reality. It says, this is the reality that I will live in. This is the reality that I will live out. We believe, we place our confidence in, we rest our souls upon the reality of God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. We rest upon the reality of, of God, the Holy Spirit, the giver of life. Like gravity, like quantum physics, like the third law of thermodynamics, this is a truth which life is mediated in. And that means that we may not understand absolutely everything. But not understanding it doesn't deny the truthfulness of it. Obviously, as time went on, we now have the Bible. We now have the record of the apostles' teaching, what they taught, what Jesus said and what he did, the letters that were written. But a curious thing has taken place over the years. Instead of seeing the apostles' teaching as something which opens us up to the immense reality of God's presence in this world, Something that through the power of God speaks into our lives. The apostles' teaching has been viewed as information that we need to sit in judgment upon. I like that, or I don't like that. Oh, I don't really believe that statement, and, and so we kind of parse it out. And because of that, for various reasons, the apostles' teaching sits on the shelf. According to a 2014 study, of biblical literacy in Canada. While 67% of Canadians claim Christian faith, only 11% read their Bibles at least once a month. Only 13% say that they feel the Bible is a way that they can know God more deeply in their life. Have you ever heard the phrase, a Bible that is falling apart belongs to a Christian who isn't? We simply cannot ignore the call to build our life around 
consistent exposure to God's voice speaking into our life. What would it be like if I decide, you know, I only need to interact with the words of Alicia roughly 11% of my day or the month. 11%, that's, I think I'm doing pretty good. If I only interact with Alicia's voice and her statements 11% of the time. It doesn't bode well, does it? Theologian N.T. Wright proses an image of a rock. He says, if you have a rock, all jagged, dirty, and rough, and you place it for a moment under the drip of a single pipe, the rock will never change. But if you take a rock and you immerse it in a constant flowing stream, then over time, the contours of the rock will become molded by the water which consistently washes over it. Our Christian life, not just what we know about the faith, but how we live it out, how we discern God's voice, how we live faithfully, how we recognize the presence of Jesus in our midst. This gets profoundly stunted if we never let the words of Scripture, the apostles' teaching, to consistently wash over us. It's not enough to say, well, I've read the Bible once. Or, well, I did that when I was in Sunday school as a kid. It's kind of like saying, I had a shower once. Or, well, my parents used to bathe me every week when I was a kid. So I think I'm pretty good. We're missing something. The Apostles' teaching, not only being a foundation of what it means to live the Christian life, it is a profound gift to us. It is a gift by which we which get drawn into the reality of God's presence in this world. There's a, an author, Robert Mulholland, who says that scripture works kind of iconographically, kind of like an icon, in which it, when you look into an icon, um, it, it, like it's like it draws you into a heavenly reality. That's what an icon is supposed to do. And what he says is the scriptures, that's what you do, is you read the scriptures and you get kind of drawn into this heavenly world, which is true life, in which we see the reality of God's presence. And we hear God's voice speak into our lives and address things we're actually going through this day. Charles Spurgeon said, the more you read the Bible, the more you meditate on it, the more you will be astounded by it. Not only will you be astounded by it, but you will be amazed at how the Apostles' teaching, spoken or written over 2,000 years before, has profound implications on your life here and now. Why? Because it's living and active. Because it's not just words on a page. It isn't just this ancient document to be looked over. And devoting ourselves to the study, to the mediation, and to the immersion Immersing ourselves in Scripture is not just a task to be muscled through. It is a means of grace in which the truth of Jesus' presence is revealed in us and for us. It is a profound gift by which we can, Jesus continually makes himself and his voice available to us. This is why, for, for my own spiritual life, uh, I am so uh, happy to practice Lectio Divina, in which we do that here. Because the point of that is not just to sit and read for information. And in fact, in some sense, the, what helps Lectio Divini is trying to getting ourselves out of the way. And sitting and allowing the words of Scripture to sink deep into us. Sometimes it is amazing how we hear the words of Scripture, how we hear the words of God address us. Last week, we saw this grand vision of a new life, right? Expressed in baptism, right? This life with God, this new life in Jesus. This was, this was the ultimate love which we could pursue, this love which loves us back. A new life which is about knowing and experiencing the deep love of God and the rich anointing of the Holy Spirit. This vision of life which is reoriented around the eternal presence of Jesus. And it's okay to have that vision, but then you can ask, well, how do you live that out? What is it? How do, how do you do that? Well, 
What is one way that we live out this new life? We devote ourselves to the apostle teaching. And it means that we have to approach the scriptures in humility, in expectation, in openness. We have to see the words of God to be so foundational for us that to borrow a phrase from Joshua, we keep his word always on our lips and we meditate on it constantly. After all, what if an experience of Christ's presence? What if an answer to a question or a struggle? What if an insight into the truth of God is just a page away? What if Jesus is just waiting for you to carve out some time and attend to his voice through the pages of scripture. Alicia and I, we just went to the winery. We right? had a couple days off. And we had some great wine, we had some great walks, it's great scenery. Most of what we enjoyed was being together. We had some great chats, we had some great talks. What if Jesus is waiting for you just to carve out some time to be with him through his word? If you wish to grow deeper, not just in your knowledge, but in your practice of Christian faith. If you wish your heart and your soul to be strangely warmed by the light of God's presence, then with God's help and in God's leading, may you persist in this devotion. For this is part of the baptismal life that you have been ushered into. And it is part of the life that you have promised to attend. May God empower us as we go forward. Amen.